Let's talk about how to make continuous bias tape. Right here in front of me, I've got a piece of fabric. This is a half yard that I've squared up on the edges using my rotary cutter. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut a square by folding this fabric right there on the bias so that the edges match up. And then I'm just going to cut right along this line and that is going to give me a square. Now with this one square, I will be able to make four yards of half inch wide double fold bias tape. The next step for my bias tape, now that I've got a nice square cut out, is actually going to be to fold it and press it on the bias so that I have that line marking the bias. You could use a mat and a ruler to cut on a 45 degree angle, but with bigger pieces of fabric, I find that this is the easiest way to figure out exactly where the bias is on my fabric. I just go and I press right along the bias line so that I have the triangle. And then I go ahead and open it, and you're gonna wanna cut your triangle, or sorry, you're going to want to cut your square right along that line that you just pressed. And this will give you the two triangles that we're going to be sewing together. This is one of the two seams that you'll be sewing to make this bias tape. So cut right along that line. The next step, we're actually gonna sew these two pieces of fabric together. We're going to put them so that the triangles overlap each other and um, match up that raw edge. So we have kind of this X formation that we're making here. You want on the very edges for the triangles to stick out whatever your seam allowance is gonna be. So we're gonna be doing a quarter inch seam, which means I want this to stick out about a quarter inch past the edge of the fabric. What that's going to do is it's going to allow me to make a flat seam and um, when I open it up there won't be any extra edges sticking out. So I'm just going to put that in my machine and I'm going to sew. If you want to pin to make sure these stay together exactly, you can. Um, I feel okay doing this without pins, so I'm just going to go ahead and sew it. What I've got is a piece of fabric shaped like a trapezoid, and I'm going to use this. I'll sew one more seam, and that will make my bias tape. Before I sew, though, I actually want to go and I want to press this seam open. So I'll just turn to my ironing board and open up that seam and press it nice and flat. So you can see now that I've got this trapezoid shaped piece of fabric. It's got a nice flat seam pressed on it, and along that seam line, this is the straight grain of the fabric. You can sort of see the threads going this way and this way. These are the straight grain. But if I rotate the fabric and I match up the edges, this is the bias grain of the fabric, and this is where I'm going to be marking out my bias tape. So what I want to do next is go and, using my two inch ruler, I'm just going to line it up with the edges of the fabric, and then I'm going to use a pencil. I like to use a pencil because it has a nice sharp tip. You can certainly use a marking tool or chalk, but you want thin lines here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my pencil against the ruler there to start marking the bias grain. And I want to continue that all the way off the other edge of the fabric. So we'll go and line that up and continue marking that. I'm going to continue to make those marks all the way across my fabric until I have a series of two inch wide strips. And then I'm going to show you how we match this up and sew one more seam. Okay, so I've gone ahead and marked my two inch intervals on my bias fabric strip here. And when I got to the end, there was this tiny little strip left over after my last mark. So if that happens to you, go ahead and cut that off. This happens to me basically every time I make this. So you just want to cut that off and throw that strip away so that we only have the two inch intervals left. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be sewing this bias edge to this bias edge up here. That'll be the last seam we sew and that'll form a tube that they'll all then cut into the bias tape. It's helpful to have pins at this step because what I want to do is I want to match the first line of the bottom of the strip to the second line on the top of the strip. So I'm just going to pin through that line on the top, that's the second line, and then I'm going also through the line on the front, or sorry, that was the bottom, um, the first line. So I'll have this little bit of edge that sticks off over here, but I want to pin those edges even now. And I know it looks a little bit like a mess at this point, but it will make sense in a second. So pin that together, and then you just want to go ahead and continue matching the remainder of this raw edge. And you want to make sure when you stick the pins through at each interval that on the back side that they're coming through that same line on the back side. So you may have to shift things very slightly to get them to match up, but you want them to match up. And you want to stick that pin in a quarter inch from the edge because that is where our seam allowance is going to be. So it's important that the two lines are matching not right at the top, but at the seam allowance. Go ahead and move down to the next one here. I'm going to poke it through a quarter inch in, make sure it matches on the back side, and go ahead and stick my pin through. And then here's my last one that I'm going to pin. Make sure that I've got it matched up on the back side. All right, so there's my seam. And you notice that on each end, I've got a little bit of fabric that sticks out. That's exactly what we want at this point. My end is coming unpinned. That's exactly what we want at this point to have those ends sticking out because what we've done is create a spiral of our lines here to cut. So once you've got that pinned, you're going to want to go ahead and sew that seam again with a quarter inch allowance, just like you did the first seam. Okay, before we start cutting what is a tube, you can see I've got can stick my arm through it, it's a tube here. Before we start cutting this into tape, I want to take that last seam we just sewed and I want to press that one flat as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the line at one end of my tube and I'm just going to keep cutting on the line and that will end up giving me a very long strip of fabric. So cut right along that line. Flip your tube over and continue to cut right along the line. It will cross the seams and you just cut right across those. Now there may be places where, like right here, the line wasn't exactly matched up and I've done a bad cut, it's okay because that is going to end up folded to the inside. So try to be as precise as you can, but if your scissors go a little bit astray, it's not the end of the world. And then you can see as I get closer to the end here that I'm going to end up cutting right to that little leftover bit that stuck off the edge of our last seam. So you'll just cut right through that. And now I have a really long strip of bias fabric. How do I get this to be bias tape? That's what I'll be showing you next. 
Okay, I've put a piece of cotton batting down on my cutting board so that I could show you how I'm going to turn this um, strip of fabric into double fold bias tape. Now, normally I would do this on the ironing board, but I can't get the ironing board under the camera here for you to see what to, I'm doing, so that's why we've got the batting here. If you ever need to iron on top of something, a towel or batting or something like that works well as long as you remember to make sure that it's cotton and not um, a blend of synthetics that will melt. So I've got this little tool here. This is actually a bias tape maker. These are um, inexpensive and they come in a lot of different sizes. This is a one inch one that I'm using here. And all I'm gonna do is stick my tape in um, wrong side up and sometimes I like to use a straight pin and it kind of catches the fabric right in there until I can pull it out to the other end. And as you can see, what this does is it's going to fold the fabric for me to create that first fold that I need to make. So all I do is pull with the iron, and press, and then I've got my first fold. I'll do that down the entire strip of tape. Once I'm done with all of that and I've got a single fold, this would be one inch wide single fold bias tape, to make the double fold, all I need to do is fold it again. Now with bias tape, if you've ever bought it prepackaged, you'll notice that one side is folded just a little bit narrower than the other. So I don't want to precisely match these seams up, I actually want the top edge to, or I want the bottom edge to peek out just a little bit so that I can have that one edge that's just a little bit shorter. And that's used when you're sewing the bias tape on. You always sew the short edge first and then you fold the longer edge around. So there we go. That's exactly how you would make double fold half inch wide bias tape.